My colleague Ariana Cha wrote an article about people who are immunocompromised for which the vaccines might not be highly or entirely effective. People with autoimmune disorders, transplant patients, people with certain types of blood disorders. How does someone know if they're protected against the vaccine and, and how does that inform their day-to-day -day decisions? Well, we're doing right now in real time, Yasmin, those studies right now. In fact, there have been a number of studies looking at the response to the vaccine, particularly among transplant patients who are usually rather severely immunosuppressed to prevent the rejection of their transplant. And those who are on certain drugs uh, and things like mycophenolate and other drugs, the response is really quite low. So when those individuals it's likely, and again, this is just being studied right now so that we can get a good handle on it. You might want to try more boosts with those people and or and likely and making sure that even though those people are vaccinated and for the general healthy population, you don't have to worry because you can feel quite protected that individuals such as those may need to take an extra step to protect themselves, which mean they may need to continue to wear masks, particularly in indoor settings where there's the possibility, if not the likelihood, that they may come into contact with an unvaccinated infected individual. So the idea of immunosuppressed individuals is an important consideration. And that's the reason why we can't say one size fits all. We have a heterogeneous population in this country and throughout the world. So a healthy person who gets a good response is clearly different from someone who's on cancer chemotherapy or who is on an immunosuppressive drug for, as you mentioned, an autoimmune disease, and especially people who have transplantation together with immunosuppressive therapy. Are there other conditions that we know about that might impede the efficacy of these vaccines? Well, yeah, you know, there, there are primary immunodeficiencies. There are a number of individuals who congenital or otherwise have a primary immunodeficiencies. For the most part, a weakened immune system is either primary due to an infection, as in HIV AIDS, or iatrogenically induced. Namely, in order to treat another disease, out of necessity, you have to immunosuppress individuals. There are a considerable number of people like that in the country, and those are the people you have to pay special attention and the kinds of recommendations that we've heard from the CDC about what people who are fully vaccinated can and cannot do might not apply directly to the people who are immunosuppressed. And again, that's why I say, although we try to get broad guidelines and recommendations, often one size does not fit all.